Hello, everybody, and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. Glad to have everybody join us today. Uh, today's webinar is going to be our Welcome to the Third Dimension series, Messing with Meshes. With, uh, of course, with my auto lisp, that might have sounded like meshing with meshes. Hard to say. Hey, today's uh, presenter is going to be Victoria, and uh, moderating will be uh, myself, Volker, and Naman. And uh, in the background, not listed here, is we are also going to have Scott Green, one of our other technical support specialists, moderating. Um, you will meet him next week in our upcoming presentation. All right, so a little bit about us. For those who haven't been here before, uh, Victoria is a technical support specialist in our Manchester, New Hampshire office. I'm located in Lake Oswego, Oregon, and Naman is an AutoCAD expert elite out of the West Chester, Cincinnati area. Uh, AutoDesk expert elites, uh, this guy's been around, he's very good. Good to always have him on board. If you aren't familiar with the expert elites, they do um, support a lot of our products on their own time in our Autodesk forum, forums. I believe uh, Naman actually has a uh, blog out there. He's in the forums all the time. Uh, he may even have a book deal going. I don't know. Uh, some kind of a movie right thing going on. Who knows? Scott Green is also here in our Lake Oswego office. So good to have you here, Scott. So before we begin, again, this is Messing with Meshes, Third Dimension. I'd like to uh, throw a few polls out there. i uh, actually going to throw, of the five polls we have, I'm going to go ahead and throw out four of those right off the bat, just to get them over with. So the first one being, is this your first AutoCAD, uh, Build Your AutoCAD IQ session? And... Um, if you are new, we are super glad to have you here, and we hope you'll uh, get a good good experience out of this. Uh, for those returning, welcome back as always. Always glad to see you back here. Right now we have about, let's see, 88% uh, who have are return attendees and 12% who are new to our webinars. So. I guess we need to be pretty good about this. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show those results on the screen real quick. All right. Let's do our next poll here. So what do you hope to gain from this session? Oh, looks like last week's poll. <laughs> awkward moment. Hey, uh, for those who have been here, um, we usually try to get the awkward moments out of the way right away. So forget that poll, okay? <laughs> oh, that was... Uh, <laughs> it happens. We needed one of those, Victoria. <laughs> yeah, right up front. All right, so uh, let's do one that is valid here. We like to know what you're working with uh, when... Um, when you join us here, which applications you use. So just to get an idea of um, the viewers that we have, and what we can present in future sessions, more so than in this one. Obviously, in this session, we've already got the uh, topic covered. So um, looks like uh, quite a few of you are using, actually, the majority of you are using the uh, full-blown AutoCAD session um, application. Let's go ahead and share those results here real quick. 42% uh, have said AutoCAD, 24% AutoCAD LT, and 17% uh, plus 12% on the verticals. 4% using another application, so that's always interesting. Um, but um, well, we hope you will all get something out of this. So. Looks like one more poll for right now. Um, and this is, which is your preferred method for working with 3D? You use solid modeling, 
surface modeling, mesh modeling, or all three, or you don't do any at all. Okay. Well, according to these results, which I'll plop up there in a minute, this could be very interesting today. And let's go ahead and show those instead of me being repetitive. So 45% uh, of you don't do any 3D modeling at all. So I'm hoping that this is something you're wanting to learn more about. Uh, Victoria is going to have a great presentation on this, 27% doing solid modeling and um, none using mesh modeling. So, like I said, it should be pretty interesting how this turns out for everybody. Let's go ahead and uh, close that and we'll get back on the track here. We do have some housekeeping. Uh, many of you are familiar with this, but I do need to show this for the new attendees. So. Um, hey, feel free to leave your uh, questions in the chat window. Uh, we'll be answering those throughout the uh, session and uh, as well as taking Q&A at the end. The session, as, all, as in all cases, is we record the session. So it will be made available. The links, uh, this should really be changed, but they are available for you already. Uh, the links are available in the uh, re registration reminder that was sent to you, uh, as well as in the post-webinar survey, you'll get those, and in the um, the uh, chat window at the beginning of this session, those were available as well. We have had a, um, gosh, I don't even know, 49 or 50 webinars now. So quite a few. It's been over a year's worth of uh, webinars with a few breaks in between, but uh, just some examples of some of our previous webinars. So um, one thing I'd like to point out is, you know, back to basics. Get some comments about it being too basic. Well, the key word there is basics. So, you know, keep that in mind when you see the registration reminder coming up. We have beyond the basics, which is more advanced. And then, of course, welcome to the third dimension, which is, uh, well, obviously for advanced users of um, AutoCAD or for those wanting to learn about uh, some of the advanced usage of AutoCAD. All right, you can view all of our videos on the uh, YouTube channel, AutoCAD Exchange, build your AutoCAD IQ. So those are there. And then I'd like to uh, quickly go over this. We have a new release of AutoCAD um, coming out, you know, obviously in the spring. Uh, that's typical of what we have, I should say. And um, a lot of feedback we get is, you know, hey, we'd like to see this feature, or can we get this fixed, or, you know, um, uh, I'd like to see an enhan enhancement to a particular feature. Uh, this is your chance to influence the future of AutoCAD releases. Joining the AutoCAD Customer Council. The two email addresses at the bottom are the ones I, if you have any interest at all in participating, I'd encourage you to email them and request um, a um, access to this uh, beta portal. Uh, you will be able to interact with the development team, provide your own feature requests, um, issues you have with the application, things that are missing, things you really like. Um, but this, you know, if you want to get your feedback addressed, this is the place to do it. And I highly encourage you to do so. I used to uh, be a member of the beta program way before I joined Autodesk. In fact, I think I started back in release 13, uh, uh, it, getting my input in on the betas. So uh, it's a great place to um, be listened to by the AutoCAD development team. All right, uh, one more item here is our Autodesk Knowledge Network. Uh, we do have featured articles here. These are solutions. These are updates for the application. Uh, there are links to file viewers, uh, free download, free applications, by the way, these five years, as well as links to hotfixes and service packs. 
uh, th uh, there are white papers here on how to do things, uh, support articles on uh, for certain solutions we've made available to fix issues. This is a great resource if you haven't been to this website. Uh, what's new in the current product, um, as well as additional downloads and uh, great resources. So check out this website if you haven't been there. I've provided a couple of quick links to AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT for hotfixes, service packs, and additional downloads. But all these links, uh, this entire PowerPoint slide deck, in fact, will be available um, after the presentation. So speaking of presentations, let's talk about this week's agenda. Meshes. What is a mesh? Well, Victoria is going to go over that. <laughs> okay, she will explain all about it. Uh, she's going to show you how to create meshes uh, from primitives as well as from other objects. And of course, we always need to know how to modify things after we create them. So, uh, uh, to the main topics there, and of course, that includes subject sub object filtering as well as using the Move Gizmo. Uh, a, a tool that was introduced, I think, back in 2007. Um, and Victoria will correct me later if I'm wrong. As well as some tools such as extrude, scale, and rotate for 3D meshes. So, that being said, and me having talked way too long, let's get on with the demonstration and let's uh, turn this over to Victoria. Thank you, Volker. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, let me just get this. Uh, let me just get this up and running. Can you hear me all right? I can. Yes. Good. And can you see my screen? And we can see your screen. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm excited to uh, present meshes to you today in uh, in AutoCAD. So um, let me just acclimate you a little bit first um, before we talk about what a mesh is. Um, so right now, uh, you might be used to working in the drafting and annotation workspace. If you click down here on the workspace gear in the right-hand corner and click on the 3D modeling tab, we're going to be working in the full 3D modeling workspace today. Typically, we work in 3D basics, but the 3D modeling workspace gives you an entire ribbon just dedicated to meshes. So uh, now that we're there, uh, from the Home tab, just navigate over to the right. You'll see that there's a couple of tools for meshes on the main ribbon here, on the Home ribbon. Um, but we're going to switch over to this Mesh tab here and work in the full Mesh ribbon. So what is a mesh? Um, a mesh model is composed of vertices, edges, and faces. Um, if you compare this to 3D modeling, we've done um, solid modeling. I mean, we've done this in the past. Um, solid models have mass to them, uh, whereas if you imagine imagine a water balloon, um, a 3D mesh model is entirely enclosed, so um, no water would fall out of the balloon. Um, that's the best. Uh, analogy that I can come up with on the fly here. Um, so from here I'm just going to open a new uh, drawing and demonstrate a couple of the tools here. Um, so a mesh model uh, has something called tessellation and to demonstrate that I'm just going to use this um, uh, use the first primitive here and throw something on the screen. All right, so um, tessellation is these individual faces that you see on the box. And from here, I'm just going to switch into a different visual style. I'm going to switch to x-ray just so that you can see this a little bit better. Um, you can still see the faces. Um, so up here on the right, on the selection panel, uh, there's this uh, sub-object filtering um, drop down list here. Now right now there's no filter set so if I go and select this object it's just going to select the entire mesh box. 
but if I go in and set a filter, um, I can filter by vertex, which means that if I click on this, it's only going to select the vertices where each of the um, where each of the faces meet. If I switch this to edges, then we're only going to get the edges. So this makes it a little bit easier to select individual components in the mesh. Um, faces as well, we'll be using this one a lot. You can select just the faces on the model. And so that gives you a little bit of flexibility there. So um, there are a couple of things that you can do uh, to set this up to begin with. Um, I'm just going to open up the settings dialog box. So up here on the primitives panel, there's a little arrow in the right hand corner, right there. And I'm going to click on that to launch the settings. So when you create a mesh primitive, it's going to have, um, it's going to be subdivided into faces. And these are called tessellation divisions. And watch on the right hand side, if I change this to six, you'll see this divide into more, um, uh, more faces. So I'm actually going to leave this as the default, so I'm going to cancel out of this. Uh, you, you can set this up for different, um, all of the different primitives that are available. Uh, I'm going to leave it at three and three. All right. So from here, um, you have the same primitives that are available in solid modeling, but in mesh modeling. So you have boxes, cones, cylinders, pyramids, spheres, wedges, and torus. So if you don't want to use a primitive and you have some pre-existing geometry that you want to create a mesh model from, you can also create mesh models um, from basic geometry like lines, arcs, polylines, splines. Um, and I have a couple of examples to demonstrate how you do this. So we'll jump into this edge surface drawing right here. And to demonstrate edge surface, we're going to use the edge surface tool, or edge surf is the command, if you want to type it into the command line. I'm just going to click on the uh, edge surface tool up in the ribbon there. And the first thing that I'm prompted to do, and if you're ever wondering what to do, uh, the command line will prompt you right there. It's saying select object one for surface edge. So I'm just going to select any edge here. So I select one. It's asking for the second one, the third one, and the fourth. And now you'll see this, the, uh, the mesh created um, from, those, from that boundary. Now this is a closed boundary. Um, I have a duplicate of it over here to demonstrate. Um, if I move this out so that it's not a closed boundary, if I try to use edge surface on this and I select my four sides, we get an error in the command line here saying that it couldn't be, um, uh, couldn't be created. So I'm just going to reconnect that. And now I'll be able to create another one. So the second thing I want to do here, uh, there are two system variables. Um, the first one is called surf tab one, and the second one is called surf tab two. And if you notice the, um, how are we? Uh, if you notice, this doesn't look very accurate. So I'm just going to zoom in on the uh, on the edge here, so that you can see uh, the actual object that was created isn't very accurate um, compared to the original geometry. So if you want to make this more accurate, at the command line, you can type in surf tab one, enter, and then you'll see that this value is set to six. Um, this is the number of uh, tessellation divisions that are um, uh, that are generated on the on the uh, on the edge surface as you go across in one direction 
and that's why there's two variables for this. One is the, they're called M direction and N direction. So let's change this to 32, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to click on edge surface again, and select the first, second, third, and fourth lines. And if we zoom in a little bit, I'll select this to make it clear. I'm going to select the other one as well. You can see the difference here. Um, now there are 32 tessellation divisions as we go down the surface. So the last thing here I'm going to do is enter surf tab 2, and it pops up in my list here. And I'm going to change this one to 32 as well. And I'll show you what this looks like on the last one. So click on Edge Surf. Actually, this time I'll enter it at the command line. Edge Surf. And you'll see that pops right up. Select my objects. Oh, there we go. All right. And now you can see that the, uh, the resulting mesh conforms much nice. Uh, much nicer, <laughs> better, much better to the um, to the original geometry there. So there's the three of them. I'll just zoom on that so you can see the difference. And then I'm going to save this. And if you'd like to compare later, uh, I'll add this to the data set and upload it to the box account uh, so that you can download it and take a look. All right. So the second thing, uh, let's say. We have two lines, and these, just to demonstrate here, they are at different elevations, and they're kind of skewed, and um, yeah, there's, there's really nothing similar about these, but let's say we want to create uh, a mesh that goes from one to the other in a uniform manner. Um, we can use the next tool here, which is called Rolled Surface. And there, I let the flyout come out if you want to take a look at that real quick. It's going to create um, a uniform ruled surface between these two lines. So I'll click on this, and the first thing you do is select the first line and then select the second line, and it's as easy as this. We will. All right. Now, if you get an unexpected result like this, uh, where I have the holes between this, it doesn't look quite right. Um, one trick that you can use to uh, correct the result, let's just delete this one, is to select your lines in a different order. So I'm going to select this one first and then this one. No, nope, that's what I did last time. I'm going to select the bottom one first and then the top one. Hmm. And that doesn't seem to be doing it for me. I'm just going to regenerate. No? Okay. Of course, I'm having a, uh, an awkward moment here. This was working fine for me a little while ago. Uh, let's see if I can change the surf tab value. We'll change this to 32. And surf. I believe it's just surf tab one, because with a ruled surface, you're only you're getting uh, one row of surfaces or faces rather. So let's try this one more time. There we go. Okay. So all I did was I, I changed the surf tab value, surf tab one value, from six to thirty-two. So it's a finer mesh as you go along, um, and it conforms better to those lines there. Let's rotate around and I'll reset it to its original location. And there we go. Okay, so let's move on to tabulated surfaces. Now a tabulated surface, you can find this right up here. I'll just leave it open while I talk about it. Um, this will create a mesh um, that's swept along a line. So we have this um, we have this uh, squiggly line, for lack of a better term. Um, and we'd like to sweep a surface, or sweep a mesh along this uh, straight line. So we're going to select the tab surf command. You can type tab surf at the bottom. 
before I do this, uh, take a look at the command line here. Uh, current wireframe density is surf tab one equals six. That right there tells you what the current value is, and that is very helpful. So it's only going to create six uh, faces as it extrudes this. So I'm going to select the path, and then select the direction. All right. All right, the final one here is the revolved surface. And here I just have a spline that I created with a strange shape. And here um, I have a line that has connected the endpoints of that spline. And I'd like to revolve this around to create a, um, uh, a closed and uh, watertight model, uh, mesh model. So I'm going to select RevServe here. I'll hover over it for you for a second. Again, you can type RevServe at the command line if you'd like, um, but I'm just going to click on the tool up here in the ribbon. And I'm going to select the object that I want to revolve and then the object I want to revolve it around. And then I'm being prompted for a start angle. I'm just going to accept the default of zero. And then it's asking me if I want to go, you know, the full three, 360 degrees, or maybe, you know, you only need a 180 degree turn. You could do that. Uh, I am going to go with the three, 360 default. And then you'll see that we get this surface, uh, this uh, mesh here. So here, this one looks a little strange. Um, what I can do to make this a little bit smoother, and you could go in and you could change the tab surf one and tab surf two or surf tab one and surf tab two variables. Or after the fact, um, if you're pretty happy with the shape and you don't feel like it needs to be accurate to your geometry that you use to revolve this with, um, you can use some of the other tools to modify the model after the fact. So one of these things is uh, smooth more. Now if you try to use smooth right now, it's going to tell you that basically this is already a mesh. Um, so that first level, sorry about that, <laughs> that first level is um, basically converting a solid to a mesh or um, a similar object to a mesh. So this is already at the first level. Um, we're going to click on smooth more and it will increase the level. Now you have four levels of smoothness available to you with the model. So there's one, or that's the second one, three, and four. And you'll see that that gets a little smoother each time. Now if you want more, uh, let's say we want to edit this model after the fact, but you only have a certain number of surface, surfaces available to you, I'll make this, uh, or faces rather, you only have a certain number of faces available to you. So we've got a few, but maybe you want to subdivide some of these. Uh, you have a few options to do that. So here we can choose Refine Mesh. And Refine Mesh will take, now see how this is uh, a series of much smaller surfaces. I believe it quadruples the number of surface, surfaces. Or, sorry, face. I keep saying surfaces, I mean faces. <laughs> it, keeps, um, it quadruples the number of faces within that area. Um, and then since I only selected a couple of these faces, um, it only applied to the ones that were selected. Now if I undo this, and I go back and I select the entire object, uh, it'll be a little bit more uniform. So if I say Refine Mesh, now it's quadrupled the, face, the, the faces on the entire model. Okay. So you can also go in the other direction here. Um, you can smooth less. Oh, I, I may have, uh, I may need to undo the refining. Yep, okay, smooth less, there we go. And that will bring us back to our original object there. So you can go both ways. 
Um, one interesting thing to note, I'm just going to throw a, uh, a 3D solid, now I'm going back to the solid tab here, I'm going to throw a 3D solid box in here, in the model, and I'll show you what smooth object does. So if we go over to the mesh tab, and let's say you have a 3D solid, but you really, you know, you just want the mesh. You want to be able to um, do a little bit more sculptural, or uh, maybe you, you know, maybe you're working on an industrial design, something like that. Um, you want to be able to manipulate it a little bit more free, uh, freely. You can say smooth object, and now let me open my properties panel. Okay, and now you'll see this is mesh instead of a solid. So I'll close that again. So from here, then you can use the same tools, smooth more, smooth more, refine, and you can edit your 3D solid in the same manner. Now, if you do this, if you do convert your solid to a mesh, uh, it does lose its mass properties that were associated with that solid. So they're a little bit different. So it uh, lets you it gives you some more sculptural tools, but you do lose the um, some of the properties that are associated with 3D modeling or 3D solid modeling. Okay. What else do we have here? Oh, okay. I've got a couple more tools I'd like to show you, and then we're going to put it all together, and we're going to model um, a game chair together. So here, um, let's smooth this a little bit. Let's get it down to here. Now let's say um, we want to split just one face in half. Uh, I'm going to go back in here to my filters and select face again. And I'm going to say, uh, select this one here, and I'm going to go up here and split the face. And what this will do is split the face in two. Now it's asking me for a point to split it. I'm just going to split right here. And I can select any other point here. Okay. So now this is split into two different faces. Now I, let's see, what was the other thing I wanted to do here? Ah, okay. You can uh, extrude a face. So let's select one here. And let's say we extrude this. Uh, it does some strange things. Um, now I'm extruding uh, freeform here, so I can move this any way I want. Um, so let's do this. That's sort of it's a strange looking model. This is just for an example, but um, let me undo that for a second. And I will go back here and say extrude face, enter, and then what you'll see. Oh, I can't do it on this one. Okay, um, we'll do it on the game chair. Um, all right, the last thing I wanted to show you before you move on is we can add a crease. Now, a crease will add rigid geometry to a mesh model. Um, so if you're used to the, the solid modeling, and maybe you want just one piece of it um, to be more rigid than the, the more fluid uh, look that you get with meshes, what you can do is use this Add Crease button and select your face. And then it'll create this more rigid piece right here. So you see the nice, crisp, um, smooth line around there. There's no tessellation within this area. And then from here, if I use that extrude face bit, um, ah, this one. This model's a bad example for that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. We can also remove the crease if we want to. And right back to normal. Excellent. All right. So from here, uh, let's jump into this game chair model. Now, this is a blank drawing to start with. Uh, we're going to build uh, just a very rudimentary game chair um, to illustrate some of these tools all together on the same model. Um, you might use this for conceptual design. If you do any industrial design, maybe you're used to using AutoCAD, but you just want to play around with meshes for you know, one project. Um, try this out. You know, use some of these tools. There are other softwares out there that um, do meshes and this type of modeling a little better. We've got uh, Fusion 360, Inventor. They both do this um, 
you know, to a, to a greater extent. But a lot of people don't realize that some of these tools really are right here in AutoCAD if you do want to test them out. So from here, I'm going to start with uh, Meshbox. And I'm just going to start it at 0, 0. And from here, um, I'm going to select length so that I can define the size of this. I'm going to uh, extrude along my uh, x-axis here and just say 24 inches. And then I want to come out 18 inches this way. And then we'll go 24 inches up. And now, just so that you can see, I am in the conceptual visual style here. Um, I'm going to switch to x-ray so that you can see this. Um, actually, before we get into it, uh, if you are in 2D wireframe, what you'll notice is that if you go to uh, manipulate something, you'll see just a red dot here. And you're not going to see what's called the move gizmo. But if you switch yourself into a different visual style, uh, let's say conceptual, um, or even there's a second wireframe visual style here. And I believe the move gizmo appears in this one. It does. So you'll see that uh, it looks just like your UCS right here um, icon. Uh, but it's specific to that element that you're trying to modify. So to make this a little bit easier to see, so you can see the depth and not get lost in the lines, I'm going to switch to the x-ray mode here. And we'll work like this. All right, so you see this is subdivided into three by three by three. OK, so from here, all right, we're going to select uh, three of the um, of the faces on the top of this model here. Now we could go to the filters. Now if you're kind of sick of switching, you know, having to pull down this menu, uh, what you can do is hit Control, and Control will let you pick those objects as well. Um, so that makes it a little easier sometimes. Okay, from here, um, now we're going to extrude this up um, using that extrude face tool here. We'll just say extrude, and I'll pick a spot, and I'll just say 8 inches. So now you'll see that this created three more faces on this side, an extra face on this side, and they're, you know, they're pretty uniform. All right, now let's say we want to uh, do the same over here, but um, maybe we don't want to extrude it. Uh, maybe we just want to move it. We just want to manipulate it a little bit. Um, from here, I'm going to hit Control again and select these. Okay, now you see what happened there. I actually selected the, um, the edge. And now as you get more complicated, uh, as the faces are a little bit closer together and it's harder to tell where the geometry is, uh, this is where I like to start using that uh, drop-down menu instead of hitting Control. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm only selecting faces and click on face and then I can come through and I you know I can click right on that and it's still going to select the face even if there's other geometry behind it that might get picked instead. So from here um, what I'd like to do is use the move gizmo and if you'll notice see the blue line that's gone uh, straight up and down the, uh, uh, the screen there and if I hold it over the um, the y-axis, it's going to uh, strike that green line across, and the same with the x-axis, the red line. Uh, this will constrain your movement of those faces to that axis. So I want to move these just on the z-axis. I don't want it to move any, you know, to the left, to the right, front, back. I just want it to move straight up and down on that z-axis. So I'll click on it when that blue line is there. And no matter where I move the mouse on the screen now, it's constrained to that z-axis. So now I'll just move it down. I'll just say 8. And then it moves the way that I want it to move. OK. So all right, the next bit from here, uh, let's select the front. 
Now if we grab these right here, we'll extrude them. We'll use the extrude command again. We'll just pull this out eight inches. Now you notice that it did the same thing that it did on top. It actually added faces. All right. Let's see. Okay. So now we've got a general chair shape, and uh, we're pretty happy with it. Okay. Let's um, let's smooth it. We'll say smooth more. Now you notice I'm still in that uh, face filter. Um, so if I hit smooth more, you would figure that it might only pick that face, but it actually applies to the entire mesh model. Um, so that's okay. So you can actually keep your filtering setting and smooth the entire model at once. And then go back to modifying. Okay. So from here there are a couple more um, a couple more tools that are kind of cool. Um, let's switch this and we'll switch this to uh, yeah, edges. I'm going to grab the edges and uh, let's say we just want to grab all the ones along this side. And maybe the ones along the other side too. I'm just going to use my uh, I use my view cube there to switch really quickly. And we'll grab some of these. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just stretch these by using the move gizmo. I'm just going to stretch them up maybe three inches. All right, and that'll give the, the seat a little bit of a, a hit there. And we can grab the, uh, I'm going to go back to my face filter and pick a couple of these. And from here, uh, if you right click, there's an option to scale. Now you can scale these faces, pick a point to scale them from. I'm just going to pick that end point there. And you'll notice as I scale it, the model will move a little bit. Sorry for the flicker. It's it's a little bit finicky as you move it. Um, but I'm just going to say, uh, let's say 0.25. So I'm going to scale it down. And it'll sort of create that bucket look to the seat. And I'll switch to our realistic visual style so you can see what that looks like. All right, so we're starting to look like a seat here. And maybe we're happy with it. You could sit here and play with this for hours, um, but we, we, we're not going to. Um, but once you're happy with it, uh, there are a couple of other things that you can do. Uh, let's say that you want that rigid geometry on there. Um, maybe we want to add a crease. And we'll select this and just add the crease here. And that'll add that rigid geometry. There we go. And I'll do it to the other side as well. Here we go. All right. So we've got the we've got a semblance of a chair here. It looks all right. Um, maybe we we'll want a little bit smoother now that we're happy with the general shape of it. Uh, we'll select it and just say smooth more. Maybe refine the mesh here. And now we've got a very smooth looking chair. So the final thing I'm going to do is convert this to a solid. Maybe I do want to. Um, take advantage of some of the mass properties. Uh, so this works both ways. You can take this model and there's an option right here. And you can convert it to a surface if you'd like. Um, but convert to solid. Here we go. And this is going to take a minute. So we'll wait. There we go. All right. So now if I select this, and open my properties palette. You'll see that this is now a 3D solid. That's not the most beautiful chair in the world, but maybe it's the first uh, concept design and can very, very quickly uh, create a rough model just to show a client and say, you know, are you happy with this or are you not? Um, okay. All right, um, so that that is about all I have for today. Um, Volker, Noan, uh, Scott, 
how are we doing with questions in the chat window? Oh, let us take a look. Actually, before we get to the questions, I am going to go ahead and uh, just go through our slide deck real quick here and finish that up and then uh, take care Absolutely. of those questions, I okay? Take control, yep. Yeah, all right, so uh, one second, everybody. Oh, and thank you very much for that presentation, Victoria. Oh, you're welcome. It's fun. I hope everybody's excited, as excited as I am about it. It's a, an interesting topic. All right. Yes. All right. So uh, we do have in that slide deck available some uh, additional resources, help answer some of those more in-depth questions. And I should point out the very top one, Autodesk Knowledge Network Community. These are the Autodesk forums where people such as Naman hang out, many of the Autodesk employees uh, from the uh, product team to the technical support staff to customer service hang out and um, certainly try to help answer your questions as well as many of you end users. I know hang out there as well. So a uh, great place to ask questions, get questions answered, or just maybe um, enjoy some light reading. All righty. Uh, so these resources, make use of these when you download the uh, the web, um, the um, PowerPoint slide deck, as well as the data set. Some coming attractions. Okay, well, actually, <laughs> there's only two of them on the docket right now. The first one uh, is already, uh, obviously, we did that one today. And then uh, next week, Scott Green will be presenting uh, Beyond the Basics attributes, making the most of your data. So we're expanding on the um, building blocks revisited uh, webinar we did last week, and we'll be adding attribute data to blocks and extracting those to a table as well uh, within the drawing, as well as an external spreadsheet. So very cool stuff. Um, won't be spending a lot of time on tables, uh, most of it will be on the attributes themselves, little tips and tricks and how to use things, how to how to troubleshoot it uh, if things go wrong. After that, we are going to take a break. We all need it. Actually, we have <laughs> we need it, but we have other work to do as well. So, but um, yeah, we are building up for our 30 productivity tricks, tips and tricks on October 8th. And uh, I should make you aware it's not on this slide, but on October 7th, I believe it is, uh, the day before our webinar, we are going to have another Autodesk Answer Day, um, which we'll be promoting on the Autodesk website um, as we get closer to that. A great place to uh, leave questions in the forums, um, and we are going to have developers, product managers, uh, support techs, uh, customer service agents, we're all going to be available to answer as many of those questions as we can during that day. More information to follow on that. Hey, to have your friends or colleagues sign up and view these webinars, go ahead and go to our registration page on uh, autodesk.com help-webinars. Uh, the link, of course, is a little longer than that, but it'll be within this PowerPoint. Uh, you can also leave additional feedback at this uh, site. And just to review, check out the landing page. Uh, again, not only do we have um, our registration up here, we have a upcoming webinar sessions. You can also access all of our previous webinars available on YouTube here. You don't have to go there directly. Uh, in the top uh, left corner of that uh, uh, video, there's a playlist button, and you can select any one of our webinars there. You're all welcome to leave feedback questions or comments, suggestions on this page after the webinar. We'll be link, uh, emailing this link to you. Um, so, you know, hey, go ahead and leave uh, feedback or any feature requests. Um, on this site.
You can also email us at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. And I do want to thank all of you um, for using the subject line, Build Your AutoCAD IQ, in the, in the previous you know, last couple of weeks' emails we've been getting. Uh, we really appreciate you doing that. We have many webinar teams. And uh, we actually had a great tip brought to us last week uh, for presentation in our webinars. Um, I have incorporated so far in my script, but uh, I'm not presenting right now. And uh, we'll be sure to um, incorporate it next week to uh, make it a little more better when it comes to the visual aspect of our webinars. All right, so that being said, I think that's about it. We'll go to Q&A, and uh, Naman um, or Scott, if you have any interesting questions that a customer may have, uh, attendee may have uh, given here, I'm going to go ahead and send the uh, present, make the presenter Victoria again, just in case we need to use her AutoCAD here. Absolutely. I did see one yeah. in there, Volker, asking to show uh, conversion from mesh to solid again. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd be glad to demonstrate that. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll jump back into this first drawing here. And um, first I'll smooth this. I maybe you just need a box that's a little bit smoother around the edges, and then you want to convert it back to a solid. Um, what you can do is then up here, you can either click on convert to solid, or at the command line, oh, let me close my properties palette so you can see the command line. You can type in convert to oh, um, there it is. It's C O N V T O S O L I D. It's um, conv to solid. That's awkward to say um, for a command. So you can click on it in the ribbon there, or you can look up the command there. Uh, I'm just going to click on it and let that run. Now the more complex this is, the more tessellation you have on your model, uh, the more refined it is, the more um, complex the geometry, the longer that process will take. But now, um, properties, if I can type, there we go. Uh, this is now a 3D solid and you'll get um, You'll get all of the properties of a 3D solid uh, attributed to that, but you also get the benefit of the smoother edges um, of a mesh. So if we look at this in, uh, let's say conceptual, you can actually see as I spin it, look at those curved corners. Looks pretty good. All right, do we have any other questions? Yeah, I'm looking through this and um does not look like we have too many questions. One is, can this be used for CNC work? And um, I do know that there are many people out there um, doing CNC work with um, objects created in AutoCAD or, you know, from Inventor brought into AutoCAD. Um, mm -hmm. But I am unfamiliar with that. Victoria? Um, Typically, Any thoughts on that? Don't, don't, well, don't you need to have? Um, uh, I'm not an expert on this at all, so that's you're just coming yeah. up front. Um, uh, I believe you need tool paths in order to uh, do CNC work, and I think that's something that Auto, uh, sorry, AutoCAD doesn't necessarily do. That programs like Inventor and Fusion 360 do. Um, so there, there is. If you are doing um, CNC work, uh, there are benefits to using a program like Inventor and like Fusion. Uh, that are dedicated to that kind of work. That's um, great tool, input, yeah. 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 The tools here in AutoCAD are um, they're, they're good to start with if you're if you're dabbling in it or if you only do a little bit of work um, in that area. Uh, okay, so uh, one more I'll question. I'll agree with... Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, I have used um, AutoCAD to j develop the, the form itself but had to take it to another product or the the manufacturer product uh, that to generate those tool paths uh, to uh, to develop them in CNC. So 
So okay. it is possible. Same goes for 3D printing. Somebody had a question about can they be printed on a 3D printer, so I'll let Victoria answer that one. Uh, when oh, I've actually done that before. Um, I haven't done it with a mesh model, but I imagine it works in a similar fashion. Uh, typically, you will export to STL and then um, bring it into a program for, uh, for example, if you're using a MakerBot, um, you would export to STL and then import that STL file into the MakerWare software and um, kind of orient it and scale it on the, um, on the 3D printer's platform. And then you can export what's called an X3G file. And this is specifically for MakerBot. I'm not sure how, I mean, there's tons of different um, 3D printers out there. Uh, that's just the one that I have some experience using. Um, but then, yeah, you, you can theoretically create your model in here and then um, export it and uh, print it out on a 3D printer. Uh, it's, uh, and I've seen the pre 3D printing done around here. It's pretty cool stuff. But what do I know about all this, right? Which is why I mentioned Inventor. Hey, we do have another question at least, but I'd like to run one last poll here just for those who are around. We're going to have about four more minutes for uh, uh, Q&A. So let me just get this last poll out of the way, and it's very important. Um, we want to know, did you learn something new in today's uh, session? And uh, let's see, getting, um, we're getting a couple of yeses, Victoria. Um, a couple? Yeah. Oh. Let's see, 53% voted and, oh gosh, Victoria, I don't know about this one here. You're making uh, me nervous. Yeah, I know, I know. Let's go ahead and share this. Look at that. Oh, excellent. 100% of you. That is that's great news. That makes it uh, worth our while being here. And uh, um, good good stuff to uh, good information to have, so that we can continue having these webinars um, as we've been doing. So let's go ahead and dismiss that. I uh, let's see. We have a um, oh where is it? So. Uh, Scott has already answered this in the form, but can I slice a solid? Can you slice a solid? Absolutely. Yes. Um, that's not uh, necessarily in the topics today, but it's a pretty straightforward. Um, it's a pretty straightforward uh, thing. So since we have created a solid here, um, if you go back to the solid uh, ribbon tab, there's a slice command. You can actually type it at. Uh, at the command line, select that solid, and then you're going to um, define how you want to slice it. So I'll just pick three points at random. Um, you can get a little more in depth about this if you uh, if you wanted to. Um, but now I'm going to keep both sides. Ah, oh no, I didn't. I um, that didn't display it very well. Here, we'll pick here and here and here. There we go. Now it's two pieces, and I've sliced that 3D model into, and now it's two different entities. Awesome. We have time for one last question. Um, I I want to I'd like to address something here real quick. Uh, somebody. Um, I was just typing a reply to this. I think I'll just talk about it instead. Uh, mentioning a couple of the videos that uh, we have on our YouTube um, uh, uh, site channel um, do not have sound. Um, and I had thought we fixed that. I don't know why those are so troublesome. One of them is the CUI. Um, I'm not sure what the other one is right now. Uh, we're we'll try and double check those. The CUI one, I thought I had made one available uh, that you can download that presentation from our uh, the same location where we have our data set and slide deck. If not, I'll make sure to um, place that one in that folder. I, I'm not sure what the problem was. Um, you play it on the computer. It sounds fine. We upload it to YouTube and no volume. So there are two of those. We'll try and address those. Um, so um, 
And the other, okay, the other one is working with constraints. Thank you, Pablo. Um, uh, good to know. Um, we will try and do what we can, and uh, I'll make sure that CUI one is available to download from the same location, and uh, then I'll make sure to take a look at the constraints one to place it there. Um, and we'll see what we can do to fix it on YouTube. So anyway, we are out of time, people are leaving, and so I just want to quickly thank Victoria for her excellent presentation, Scott and Noman, thank you again for your valuable assistance, and all of you attending, we know your time is valuable, we appreciate your time, and we're glad that we can throw some stuff out there that is useful um, to at least learning about the product, if not using it in your everyday workflow. So have a great week. We'll see you next week. Oh, be safe over the holiday, everybody. We do want to see you back here. And um, and even if you can't make it here, we do want to see you. <laughs> and uh, happy holiday.